So welcome everyone uh, and good evening. My name is Regina Lehman and I'm going to be your instructor tonight. Um, the focus of tonight's session is going to be on diabetes and related conditions. And I will be referring to the therapy ed review and study guides throughout the next 15 minutes or so. Um, I wanna welcome everybody um, to a hopefully an engaging session. Um, the majority of the time that we'll spend together, you'll be able to ask questions and hopefully I'll be able to answer them adequately. I wanna give a shout out to Miss Amy Bryant, who's monitoring the waiting room for me. And if anything comes up in the chat, she'll be able to give me, um, give me a heads up. All right. Okay, so let's get started. There we are. So the first thing that I have to do is, is talk about copyright and copyright compliance, right? This session is the property of Therapy Ed. As I said, we're going to be recording it and then it'll be posted on the Therapy Ed YouTube um, for a limited time. And I believe what happens is they're leaving the sessions up for, I believe it's a month, but I'm not positive. Um, and then they're taking them down and replacing them obviously with the sessions that follow. Um, everything that we are presenting here tonight is protected by copyright. So please do not make your own audio or video recordings, no pictures, no screenshots. Um, and just a heads up that information that you appropriate from another source with, that has copyrights and then you post it, that is a violation of the code of ethics and obviously and honestly is against the law. So please, you know, be mindful of, you know, taking things from sources and posting them on places like Quizlet. Um, if we suspect that there's copyright violation occurring, we will shut you down. So just so that you, you know about that, we thank you um, for, you know, adhering to those guidelines and, and honoring the fact that Therapy Head has worked very hard to develop all of these materials. Okay, so please keep your mute on, your mute on mic, your mic on mute that says, please mute your mic. Sorry about that. During the session, um, you may turn your mic on when you are, are called on. We do ask that you raise your hand or put something in the chat and wait to be called on. Um, just it makes things easier. Uh, not sure how many participants we have in the room that, right now. It looks like 78. So that's quite a few people. All right, you can use the chat box. Um, I'll get to the chat um, or Amy will um, monitor the chat for me for a little while. Um, we're going to be going over what I feel is must know content related to diabetes and related conditions. All of the information on what I'm going to be talking about this evening is in chapter nine of both the OTA and the OT review and study guides. Okay, so there's more information in there for you. So here are my top five um, things that I feel are must know content in terms of diabetes, um, peripheral neuropathy, wound management and obesity. So all of these, as I said, are in chapter nine. Um, knowing the different kinds of diabetes different types of diabetes is really important. Okay, so understanding the differences between type one and type two diabetes, um, only about 5% of cases are type one, which means that it's genetic, you were born with it. Type two is acquired diabetes and that accounts for 90 to 95% of all cases. So um, type one diabetics require insulin Type two diabetics may or may not, depending upon where they are in that process and how well they're managing their disease. Okay, gestational diabetes accounts for that other wiggle room there, that 2% to 10%. So depending upon when the data is collected is how that distribution, um, that distribution plays out. There also are diabetes or types of diabetes that are connected to certain medications, um, to certain other conditions where um, a diabetic diagnosis can be a secondary part. Um, but for the purposes of the MVCOT exam, the most important types of diabetes for you to understand are type one and type two. 
All right. You need to know the signs and symptoms. You need to understand about prevention. Um, and that kind of leads me into the safety issues with diabetes, which are hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. So hypoglycemia is anybody, anybody know? You can just unmute your mic and say it if you do. Low blood sugar. Thank you. Good. That's low blood sugar. And low blood sugar can be kind of not dangerous, but it can also be very dangerous, right? Really understanding what the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia are. And that is on page 291 in the OT review and study guide and 271. Um, in the OTA review, review and study guide. There um, is a really nice red flag box there that talks about hypo hypoglycemia. I'm really tripping over my tongue tonight. Hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. So if hypo is low, hyper is high or elevated blood sugar. And it's important to understand how those different conditions present. Because if we know that a client that we're working with has diabetes and we start to see things like the person is tachycardic, they're very dizzy, they're, um, they're pale, they seem to be weak, they're sweating profusely, they look like they're going to lose consciousness, then we should, you should really understand, I say we, as clinicians, as re getting ready, you guys to sit for the exam, that those are pretty severe cardinal signs of a hypoglycemic event. And that's where our response needs to be stop treatment and get this person some fast acting carbs. So a piece of hard candy, um, a cookie, some orange juice, um, if they you know don't have any kind of swallow problems, that really will help elevate their blood sugar and get them somewhere back to normal. Um, I've had some questions about, well, wouldn't we have them, you know, take, do a, a finger stick to take their blood sugar? Um, we want to react to those symptoms because the person could lose consciousness and wind up in a coma. So this is pretty serious. Hyperglycemia equally as serious. And this is where ketoacidosis is what we're looking for. So the person would be dehydrated. They would have a weak pulse. They would have acetone breath. And that's really the big sign of um, hyperglycemia, right? So coma is a real possibility with hypoglycemia. So the person's gonna be very thirsty. They're gonna be going to the bathroom quite a bit. So those are all signs and symptoms that requires an emergency call. That's a 911 call. So just being able to put that in perspective, if an exam item, when we get to the exam item of the week, you'll see what I mean, right? So peripheral neuropathy and diabetic retinopathy are both, um, are both complications, that's what I wanted to say, of diabetes or can be. So peripheral neuropathy, particularly in the feet and, um, really part of our intervention plan for someone with diabetes is to get them to be really, really, really good foot inspectors. So making sure that after a shower or after a bath that the feet are completely dried, particularly in between the toes, right? Because what happens when you have moisture and then you have friction, you can cause a wound, right? So making sure that feet are dry, making sure that we're inspecting for wounds are all part of a protocol to address peripheral neuropathy. Excuse me one second. I'm turning down, turning the volume off on my phone. All right. Um, diabetic retinopathy, of course, has to do with vision. So there are visual complications of diabetes and retinopathy causes low vision. So really when we're thinking about diabetes overall, we're thinking about all of the things that, we, that you need to know and all of the situations that might present themselves. So someone with diabetes may need health management as a focus. 
they may need to be thinking about you know, good dietary choices, but we're also thinking about those ADLs and making sure that they're doing, they're doing appropriate foot and extremity care to prevent a wound, right? We're also probably addressing, if someone has peripheral neuropathy in their lower extremities in their feet, then we also are thinking about safety during functional mobility tasks. Low vision has, again, I would go back and review all of the things related to low vision and what kinds of safety issues would come up related to that, okay? So it talks a little bit in the review and study guide about skincare, which I mentioned under peripheral neuropathy, but what we want to prevent there obviously is a wound. What happens when there's a wound because diabetes is an endocrine system disorder, it slows down the ability of someone to heal. So we really wanna make sure that we are preventing wounds, but if there is a wound, that that wound is addressed right away and appropriately. So the person needs to be able to say, something's going on here, I'm getting a wound, I need to, I need to have that addressed. And how would the occupational therapy process support that? Okay, and then finally, the other condition that um, we put together with um, diabetes was obesity. Um, taking, making sure that you are reviewing what morbid obesity or obesity, the effect that that has on a person's ability to engage in occupation. And also what are bariatric issues? Do we need to be thinking about special equipment? Do you need to be thinking about safety? What happens when someone is morbidly obese and they have to move? What kind of stress is being put on joints? What kind of stress is being put on um, the sensory systems? So really thinking about what are the physical complications that might arise, but also thinking about the behavioral issues that maybe need to be addressed. So thinking again about health management, thinking about diet, thinking about the person's ability to engage in occupation um, and really kind of thinking about environmentally, what changes may need to be made in that person's environment? Do they need to have a special bed? Do they need to, perhaps they're wheelchair bound, what does that chair look like? Um, what kind of equipment might they need for the bathroom? So those are also needs. Um, many, there's also the, um, the idea of individuals, I won't say many, but individuals getting gastric surgery. So what does that do to the OT process? We're seeing somebody post-surgery who is now going to be really changing a lot of things related to occupational performance. So we need to think about that. What are the risks and complications of being, um, of being morbidly obese? Right away, I think of cardiopulmonary complications. I think about altered biomechanics, the ability to move, change position. I think about endurance. I think about um, an increased risk for pressure ulcers, right? So thinking about shear and that, um, you know, and just the idea of being immobile Right? If it's hard to move, we don't move. So that then creates an environment where we might have to be thinking about wound management. Okay, so all of the information that I just kind of quickly presented in the last um, 15 minutes or so is in the review and study guides on the pages mentioned here. Okay. And the exam item of the week, um, actually was developed um, by Amy Bryan and myself when we were considering thinking about diabetes. So this is the older adult with type two diabetes who's recovering from hip replacement surgery and they're getting home-based OT. So this is kind of a typical way you might see um, diabetes kind of put into an exam item. Right, so the practitioner is there to address the hip replacement surgery and recovery at home. And the practitioner is noticing that the person is pale and diaphoretic, they're dizzy and weak. So you should be suspecting that this is hypoglycemia. 
And the correct response is to, I mean, they show you the correct response and the rationale. The correct response is to give that person a piece of hard candy. So what we really want to do is fast acting carbs to increase blood sugar. All right, so this should be done right away. So we're addressing the symptoms right away. Um, I'm going to go back. Whoops. There we go. And just to say, we would do that before we would call the primary care physician, right? We want to take care of the client first. Um, having the client rest doesn't really make sense. It sounds like it might get worse, right? The person's complaining of being weak and, and dizzy, but also is pale and diaphoretic. So we're thinking about those things together, right? And type two diabetics don't usually um, use injectable insulin. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna open up the floor for questions. We can stop the recording.